Okay, so I'm here at the uh, 2020 Grand National Roaster Show at the Fairplex in Pomona, California. Uh, it's usually a really cool show, so uh, I'm going to be walking around checking out all the cool stuff here and filming it for you. So uh, let's give this place a walk around. All right, so the first uh, building we're going to check out is the uh, Suede Palace. This is usually where all your traditional hot rods are and your traditional customs like 50s and 60s style. So uh, we're going to go in there and we're going to have a look. There's a super clean uh, 39 Mercury convertible uh, done in like a mild custom style of the uh, 1940s or 1950s. We got a uh, Ford Model A. I said all the uh, rods in this room are traditional style. Even some of them are even like original cars. All right, here's a really cool uh, 35 Ford uh, Coupe. This one's all original. Of course, there's a little bit of a crowd around it. It's like original patina going back to the old days. And uh, this is just the kind of stuff you see here at the uh, Grand National Roadster Show. A lot of cool original hot rods as well as uh, modern hot rods as well. All right, so this one's actually a 1941 Ford uh, convertible. It's got a little bit of a, a mild uh, custom treatment done to it. And it's uh, a very kind of a patina looking flat um, paint. Oh, oh, sorry. Down. Sorry about that. And uh, kind of cool looking. Okay, here's a, a cool early 50s uh, Chevy custom. And uh, this one's actually got. Uh, Cadillac taillights, so probably late 40s Cadillac taillights uh, on there. Just a cool, like traditional style custom car. Here's just a good overview of uh, some of the cars in the uh, Suede Palace. As you can see, it's uh, very, very busy. The show just actually opened about 20 minutes ago, and this, this building is already completely packed uh, with spectators. So it might be a little tough to get some video of some of the cars, but uh, we're going to see what we can do. This is kind of neat. This is actually an old school uh, drag car from back in the day with a uh, flathead in it. And it uh, looks like they just pulled out of some barn, cleaned it up, and uh, brought it here. But really interesting to see. It's really a good piece of uh, hot rod history. There's another old school uh, barn find. This one's a 32 Ford uh, five window coupe. This one's got an old school 50s Chrysler Hemi on it. Check out the uh, Edelbrock manifold there with uh, six carburetors. This thing is really, really cool. Definitely like an awesome find. That's basically how they built them back in the day. So I guess to this year's show, they have like a like kind of a drag race theme. So they got some original old school uh, drag cars, including this. Now, if you look at they've got old pictures uh, from various shows years ago and a uh, trophy from uh, one of the old uh, Grand National Roadster shows from back in the day. This is 15th annual. So that goes back quite a few years. And they've got a uh, Bonnie and Clyde Ford uh, drag car. You can see the engines pretty well set back there and uh, another coupe here with a it's like it's a straight six in it all built up with uh, three carburetors you just check out all the cool old school drag cars here just gonna give it a quick walk through it's a 28 Ford uh, Model A drag car it's gasser style uh, 32 Ford. That was less of a drag car, really. But there's a here's a here's like a Willys uh, pickup truck gasser. So it was like a Ford Anglia gasser right here with uh, some cool metal flake. And of course a Henry J Kaiser gasser. Most of those a lot of those back in the day were turned into gassers. And we got a, a cool like uh, super stock Dodge. Yeah, with the uh, crash ram intake on that one. 
Very, very cool. Looks like it's an original patina car, too. If you look at like some of the paint close up, this thing is, is pretty darn cool. Very, very rare and very, very valuable. To, uh, really cool thing to see here. Going to kind of do a quick sweep of more of the uh, cool hot rods in the Suede Palace here at the uh, 2020 Grand National Roadster Show. It's even a cool 59 Impala here. Lots of neat stuff to see. Obviously, I can't film everything or we'd be here all day, but uh, kind of get a good idea of what's going on. It's one of the old school wheel standers. Everyone used to see back in the day in all the magazines. It's the... Uh, Hemi under glass, Barracuda. You see it's got the uh, motor set behind the uh, driver's seat for weight distribution. So it can pop a mean wheelie as it goes down the track. This one's not really a drag car, but it's a really, really sweet looking 58 Impala nonetheless. Uh, done up in like kind of like an old school mild custom cool uh, custom paint job there right, continue our tour of the uh, drag racing building of course this uh, GTO here uh, there's this really cool old, uh, it's like a model a drag car uh, looks like they just pulled it straight out of a barn including uh, some of the surface rust. It says it was raced at uh, drag strips uh, from 66 to 69. So you've got the uh, old school blower on there. It's even got some old magazines and things that it was uh, pictures from back in the day. Kind of neat to see something old school coming out of the woodworks and uh, being displayed here. Here's another old school uh, drag car that's sort of come out of the woodwork, including a lot of trophies from uh, San Fernando Raceway and various other ones, including a Winter Nationals trophy from uh, 1962. It's kind of a cool uh, dragster here. Looks like it just came straight out of a barn and got wheeled right in here. All the original old school patina. Here's an original uh, Tommy Ivo car. This one's actually, it looks like it's built based on like a Buick Riviera and it's got four, count them, four Buick nailhead engines in it. And it's like, it's supposed to be like a wagon on the back, including a, I'm gonna come around here, around here. It's uh, including a roof rack. And it's got the hole for the uh, driver to climb in and out of. And of course the uh, parachutes on the back. Kind of an interesting piece of history. Here's another neat drag car. This one's actually a 62 Biscayne 409 car. Uh, so these Chevys were built, uh, basically the Biscayne was like the lightest weight because it was the base model. And they would order these up with a uh, 409 and a uh, four speed. So they were lightweight with no options and they would go fast on the drag strip. Kind of a cool piece of early muscle car history. Here's another neat piece of uh, Mopar drag race history. This is actually a super stock uh, Hemi Dart, uh, 1968. And uh, they actually shipped them just like this with the uh, primer gray, uh, with the black fenders and everything. And if you look, it's even got a uh, side view mirror delete. These were made to go really fast on the drag strip. So they would, look, it's got a uh, the back seat's completely deleted. So they would make these as light as possible and as fast as possible for, uh, for uh, drag racing, but uh, kind of interesting to see them restore one back to the way it was when they were shipped out. So very cool, very rare, and I'm sure very, very, very valuable car. All right, here's a uh, 65 Plymouth Belvedere drag car from the uh, 1960s. This one's got a, a Hemi in it, and uh, it's a 65 top stock world champion on the quarter. It's like a cool original race car that's been completely restored. So again, this is the kind of stuff you usually see only here. It shows like the uh, Grand National Roadster Show. Very cool to see. 
Another old school race car. This one's the uh, Mustang Fastback, Mustang 2 Plus 2. This one's got a uh, 427 single overhead cam motor in it. And uh, if you look, I mean, the, the windows are kind of like plexiglass. I don't know if the waviness is going to come through in the video. And uh, once again, built for, for lightweight and to go fast on the drag strip. And for the VW guys, here's a cool old MP uh, drag racing beetle called the Lightning Bug. It says it's the first VW in the world to make a 10 second quarter mile pass and make a six second eighth mile pass back in uh, 1972. So really cool to see this because uh, that was kind of the start of the whole uh, Volkswagen racing craze. There's a uh, 64 Fairlane drag car. It's gasser style with the uh, 427 single overhead cam engine. And uh, another neat old school drag racer here on display. And as we come around the back here, I'm going to have to go around. We actually have a Mustang, another Mustang. I know I showed one earlier, but here's another uh, 2 plus 2 Mustang uh, old school drag car with the wheelie bars and the uh, parachute. And this one's actually also got the uh, 427 single overhead cam engine. So lots of rear muscle here on display. All right, so there's a cool uh, 69 Camaro. This one's got a uh, 427 LS3 in it. And lots of neat uh, custom touches. Um, if you check out, it's under that hood. And uh, a lot of neat body modifications, including a front air dam, uh, it's got side scoops, and obviously it's been widened in the rear. A lot of real subtle stuff. I'm going to see if I can zoom in on the uh, door handles for you. But uh, a, lot of, a lot of cool custom stuff on this uh, Camaro that I'm sure many of you can appreciate. There's a pretty amazing uh, 60 Cadillac uh, Coupe de Ville. It's kind of a uh, neat custom. Obviously, it's been lowered. Uh, it's got some... Uh, much wider rims than it would have had originally, but they went ahead and did like a, like a 59 style hubcap in, into the wheel. And uh, on the uh, interior there, it looks like it's like pretty, pretty uh, high end leather and a custom center console with a, with a shifter in there. So uh, of course I have it roped off, I can't get any closer, but really, really sweet job they did on this uh, 60 CAD. I kind of don't know what this thing is. It says on the plaque it's a 1917 Lobby Stoli. It looks kind of like a, uh, almost like a home built. Uh, really everything's kind of overkill. She got that uh, chain drive on there. It's got uh, all the stuff from when they built the car. It's got like nice wood, almost like an old Chris Craft boat. And uh, pretty spectacular craftsmanship on this car right here. Something very, very, very interesting. All right, here's a real interesting build. This is actually uh, powered by a 1927 John Deere hit and miss engine uh, on this uh, belly tank racer. Uh, really interesting. It says they're hoping to hit 50 miles an hour with this one. <laughs> so very interesting i don't know if uh, the bonneville salts flats people have a, a class for hit miss engine powered cars but uh, if they do this one is definitely a contender because something i have never seen before very unique and a very cool build so just gonna let you take it in here see if i can get a good shot of the cockpit there very original idea and something I can honestly say I've never seen anyone do before. All right, here's another really unique car. This one's uh, our truck, actually. This is actually a Dodge, a 62 Dodge D100 four-door pickup. Uh, the four-door pickups are kind of rare, and uh, you don't see a lot of them, and especially you don't see a lot of them uh, modified like this. So a very interesting vehicle here. 
Here's another really interesting one. This is actually a old school 80s Dodge D50 pickup truck. I believe these were uh, actually built by like, Mitsubishi. Um, this one's actually owned by a famous uh, customizer, Gene Winfield. Uh, and if you look here, it's called the Machete, so like like the movie. So uh, check this out. So Danny Trejo would be very proud of this one. It's got a uh, it's like a 440 in the back of the bed there, and uh, wow, very cool. And it's got a uh, flared out wheels and everything. So kind of a cool like 80s custom pickup truck. All right, so another unique vehicle here at the Roadster Show. This is actually a, a 1936 Ford pickup truck um, done up as a lowrider. So it's got, like, the full metal flake paint. It's got the uh, murals. It's got a uh, kind of a custom interior with swivel bucket seats. Check out the inside of the bed. More murals and kind of got a little bit, a couple speakers there and a plexi uh, floor. Kind of a really cool truck real interesting because you, you don't usually see this kind of vehicle being done, done up as a lowrider especially with this much detail but uh, here it is right here all right in the uh, cars that never were category how about a 1963 El Camino <laughs> so it's like they probably took like an Impala wagon and uh, hacked it up and uh, they call it the 63 Chevy Impala Mino but uh, did a real nice tidy job on it. Like uh, it's even got like a breezeaway rear glass, similar to like a Lincoln or a Mercury uh, from back then. But uh, kind of interesting to see. It's kind of like a big uh, what if. What if they made a, a full size El Camino in uh, 1963? And uh, I guess that's pretty much what it would look like. There's a real interesting custom. According to the plaque, it was built on a uh, 37 Ford chassis, uh, and the rest of it's like just a full custom build. They just took the chassis and did a, a whole build on it. Looks very sleek. Uh, obviously, a lot of craftsmanship has gone into this car, so definitely something worth shooting and sharing with you guys. This is kind of cool. This is the, if you remember the old David Lee Roth, the Van Halen song, Panama, and you remember the music video. This is the Mercury uh, with the roof chop, that, uh, the custom Merc that was in the uh, Van Halen video for Panama. So from the uh, 1984 album, I had that on cassette back in the day and played the hell out of it. So really neat to see, like, it's kind of like an 80s custom. They, in the 80s, it became popular to build stuff in, like, sort of like the way they interpreted the uh, 1950s, much as kind of how people now interpret the 80s and 90s in a way that maybe wasn't quite, I don't know, uh, authentic, if you will. So this is kind of like an example of an 80s, 50s custom, but... One that was kind of famous for being in the uh, Van Halen video, which I'm sure many of you remember. Now here's a car that looks like something out of a, a 50 sci-fi movie. It's actually a, a 54 Kaiser Manhattan that's obviously been fully customized into something that you would expect to come from outer space back then. Uh, if you check it out, he's got a, a golden telephone receiver on the uh, dashboard swivel seats like pretty wild interior it's called the voodoo sahara it's got full custom skirts with custom tail fins so uh very interesting very odd car here at the uh, grand national roadster show all right just because i had to here's a, a shot of the back end of the uh, voodoo sahara car something very wild if you saw this thing coming down the street i'm pretty sure you'd be pretty amazed Okay, so for all you Social D fans, this is actually uh, Mike Ness's uh, 54 Chevy Custom. Of course, uh, he's a huge custom car fan, which is pretty well known. So uh, we're going to show you his uh, 54 Chevy Custom, which I'm sure is I'm sure he's very, very, it's a very awesome car. 
Okay, here's the uh, Barris Seton. This is actually a 55 Chevy Bel Air built by uh, Barris Customs back in 1957 and 1958. Uh, this one's actually been restored, so kind of neat to see this sort of thing still kicking around that, uh, you know, somebody had the foresight to uh, put it away and uh, make sure future generations could enjoy this piece of custom car history. So, uh, if we look, it's uh, pretty sweet with the uh, French in tail lights and everything else. All right, so if you've been on my YouTube channel for more than five minutes, you know I love vans, and so far this is like the coolest uh, van I've seen at the show so far. This is actually a first-generation Ford Econoline, the full custom and slammed to the ground. So. Don't see a lot of the window vans being customized. Usually it's the panel, so it's definitely something a little bit different. Uh, it's in a custom theme that continues into the inside. And it's got a, a rag top roof, kind of like a, a Volkswagen uh, micro bus, but uh, a really amazing custom van. It's got pop out windows in the back and uh, a really sweet, really sweet job they did on this uh, first gen Econoline. All right, so here's a pretty amazing, like, mid-60s uh, Pontiac. I think it's, like, 66, if I'm not mistaken. It's got a uh, four-cam motor in there. Uh, it says 750 horsepower. There's really not much information on it. It's done by Roadster Shop. It's got, like, full custom wheels made to look like the old uh, eight-lug Pontiac wheels. And, of course, like, the interior is, like, all beefed up. Looks like they took the original buckets and beefed them up. It's got the console. Uh, there's like a screen in the middle of the uh, center console on the dash there. Customized dash, uh, with like modern gauges. Um, don't see a lot of like uh, high-end uh, customs being done on like the full-size Pontiacs of that era, but this one came out really, really sharp. As you can imagine, it's drawing uh, quite a crowd here at the show. All right, here's actually a, a 1957 Continental Mark II. It's not a Lincoln. This was uh, when Continental was its own division of Ford. Uh, it's got a modern Coyote engine in it. Uh, and they, they took the, the wheels, made them look kind of old school, but, of course, wider, as you're seeing on a lot of custom cars uh, these days. Uh, trying to come around here and show you the interior. And it's on the turntable with, with the uh, full mirror, so you can see just how clean it is underneath. But uh, it's got like a bucket seats console with a screen and everything. Um, kind of unusual because they didn't build a lot of these cars. These were even a rare car when they were new, these uh, Mark II Continentals. But uh, really, really interesting custom. All right, so this car lists itself as a 55 Ford Premier Wagon. Of course, the Premier was a Lincoln, not a Ford. Uh, it does have the uh, Lincoln Premier hubcaps on it, so it's sort of a mild custom ranch wagon uh, coming around here. It's got the uh, 312 Y block in it with uh, two four barrel carburetors. So, uh, which of course would have been a very, very potent power plant when this car was new. Um, very, very cool build. Um, something they didn't build. They didn't build a uh, Premier by Ford. They built the Lincoln Premier, but uh, Kind of neat, and it shows what the car, I guess, used to look like. But uh, kind of neat to see. It's also uh, black with blue interior, which kind of kind of is an interesting color combination. And that blue is definitely not something offered by Ford in uh, 1955. But uh, a beautiful custom car, nonetheless. And it's even got the uh, star, like you would see on a Lincoln Premier. So sort of like a weird concept and something that never was, but uh, a very beautiful car nonetheless. All right, I think this is actually a new custom uh, designed to look like one of the old uh, show cars you would see back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, it's called the Six Shooter. It's a, uh, actually a Dodge, so it's got a, a Slant 6, uh, 225 Slant 6 with a full custom manifold and three carburetors. Um, these are the ones you would see like at the old shows uh, kind of stuff you'd see back at the old uh, custom car shows back then. Um, but it looks like it was done recently. In fact, the seats kind of a, are a dead giveaway that uh, this is actually a more modern uh, built custom than what it kind of gives off. But uh, 
It's got some neat uh, quarter windows there, and uh, it's got a uh, octagonal steering wheel, similar to what you'd see like in a van back in the day. But the, uh, those seats are out of something more modern, so that, that kind of gives away. It's it's almost like they went the whole way to make it look like something that was built back then, and then went with those seats. But still, it's like a pretty amazing build. All right, here's a, another interesting vehicle. This actually isn't a Nova. This is an Acadian, which is uh, basically a Canadian, uh, kind of like a car that they price somewhere between Pontiac and Chevrolet. So it's actually, this one actually has a uh, Pontiac engine in it with uh, three two-barrel carburetors. But uh, originally it shows on the plot on there, it shows that it originally had a, a six-cylinder, which you would expect to see more of in a uh, Nova of that era. But uh, this one's been kind of hot rotted a bit, but still you don't see a lot of Acadians in the United States since they were only sold in Canada. Uh, I think I've only seen one years ago maybe on the streets in Santa Monica and the guy the guy kind of was amazed I even knew what it was then. Uh, really neat to see and actually this one's from Alberta so kind of a neat custom and kind of cool that he went with a Pontiac engine just to kind of confuse people even more. Right, here's a cool hot rod. This one's actually done kind of old school uh, with the uh, full metal flake paint job. It's got a big Hemi with a blower on it coming out the uh, coming out the uh, engine compartment there. If you can call it that, it's it's filling up the whole thing. This is just a really 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 cool hot rod, um, and obviously professionally done. It's got some very uncomfortable looking seats inside, but they're painted to match. Just a lot of attention to detail on this uh, Model A. Um, it looks like it's actually been in some magazines, as you can imagine, with the amount of work that's been done. And this one's actually called the Bully, so very, 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 very nice build. All right, you know I love my Cadillacs, and uh, here's a really interesting uh, kind of a lowrider uh, Coupe de Ville, or it could be a, one of those Fleetwood Brougham coupes they made for a couple of years. This one's called House of the Rising Sun, and uh, it's sponsored by House of Color, so you can imagine the paint job is, like, absolutely flawless on this one. It's got a uh, sunroof and everything else, but uh, there's definitely some lowriders here and definitely some really interesting lowriders and ones that just have an incredible build quality, as you can imagine. Right, here's another old school hot rod. Looks like they uh, found it and kind of brought it back from the dead. This is actually a uh, bucket T, so an old school Model T hot rod uh, from back in the day, and it's been completely uh, restored, I guess, to how it looked back when it was on the uh, show circuit. Uh, as you can imagine, something like this, not exactly streetable, uh, but very cool to look at nonetheless. And it's got a uh, custom gas tank on the back. Let me come around these people. Um, and just really interesting to see because this is, this is definitely how they built them back. This was like how it was back in the 60s. But uh, amazing job and a lot of attention to detail. There's a really nice uh, Roadster here. This is called the Twin Fan Special. Um, it's got an old school Flathead 6, a Ford Flathead 6 uh, with like period speed parts. Uh, it's a new build, uh, made it look like something that was done back in the day, but a, a very, very beautiful car. Get around these people again. And uh, wow, just uh, interesting custom, because definitely like something you would see like in one of the old like small car magazines back in the day. All right, here's a, another original f custom from back in the 50s. This is actually a 1955 Thunderbird, if you can believe that. And this one was uh, modified uh, for, like, the, the show car circuit uh, even even back then. And I think, believe it, it says until the early 60s, this car toured on that circuit. Uh, it's got old school uh, blower on it with uh, four carburetors and... Uh, just really interesting to see. I believe they, they found this like in a barn and they brought it back to the way it was when it was shown. Um, something very interesting to see because again, it's another part of the history of uh, car customizing.
Yeah, this one's called the Ivory Re. This is a uh, 27 Ford uh, Roadster. Uh, it's got an old school flathead in it. Uh, this one's actually one of the contenders for your most beautiful roadster this year. I believe they announced it on Sunday who wins, uh, but I won't be here. I'm actually going to be at a different show. Um, very, very, very pretty car. This car is a 1932 Ford uh, Roadster pickup. Um, it's called War Paint, and uh, it's done kind of sort of an old school but modern style, but absolutely pretty, and the colors are very, very unique. Um, I'll try to get some shots of this one. This one's actually drawn a huge crowd, and it says it's one of the contenders for America's most beautiful Roadster. So uh, let me see if I can get you a good shot of the front. Get around all these people. As the day goes on here at the Roaster Show, the crowds are definitely thickening up, so it's getting much harder to photograph or video any of these cars. As you can see, this one is absolutely gorgeous. There's a pretty sweet car. It's a uh, 56 Chevy Nomad with lots of original patina. Uh, this one's got a modern LS uh, power plant in it, uh, but definitely kind of in the old school, and it's got old school uh, magnesium wheels on it and uh, the interior with the uh, sparkle fabric so definitely a lot of attention to detail to keep it kind of looking old school look at the roof rack I don't know if that was an original no that looks like it was homemade but it's made to look like it's like an old school uh, like JC Whitney catalog accessory or something but it uh, looks like it was actually uh, made especially for this build and uh, coming back here don't see a lot of patina nomads most of these were actually taken and restored because of the uh, value of them so definitely a treat to see this one right here all right next to the uh, 56 nomad here's one that might fool you this is an old uh, hudson hornet uh also with modern ls uh, power plant and it's full patina it still has uh like hudson hubcaps on it I mean, basically, it kind of they kind of kept it looking very stock and very original, but uh, the modern drivetrain, so you can pretty much drive it anywhere. And uh, kind of kind of neat to see this sort of thing happening. All right, here's another uh, contender for the America's Most uh, Beautiful Roadster Award. This one's a little bit more of a modern one. Uh, definitely has some old school touches, including the uh, wire wheels, um, and the grill kind of reminds me of like an old. Uh, Packer grill, almost, if, if you will, with the, uh, the way they, the slots are. Um, and check out the headlights. They're, all, they're like a teardrop-shaped headlight. Really, really clean Roadster. This one's called uh, Little Evil, according to the plaque. Okay, that's going to just about do it for the uh, 2020 uh, Grand National Roadster Show. I tried to get as much as I could. I've actually got to go pick up my kid from uh, school in a few, so I'm going to have to leave. I got uh, every, went through every single building here, though, so I did get that. I know this video is going to be pretty long. I don't know how much uh, video I shot today, but I'm sure it's going to be a long video. So if you stuck around for the whole thing, thanks, and uh, be sure to like, uh, subscribe. Tell me what your favorite car was here at the uh, Roaster Show, and until next time, I'll be seeing you.